Hey class, it's Jessie and in this lecture we're going to talk about the power of images and the role of photography in society. So let's start off with this image. It is very famous. Most people in my in-person cl in class have usually seen this image before and it was basically the quintessential image of the Great Depression. Look at this image. Why do you think this was so powerful? What is so important about this image? What's special about it? Well, first of all, it's close. Look at the details you can see on this. If this was taken from across the street and wouldn't have near the impact. And you can see the wear on her face, the lines. She's looking off into the distance. You can see she's had a hard life. Her clothes are dirty. The kids are a little disheveled. And it really just represents hard times. And a big part of it being so powerful is the contrast um, with the light and the dark and just of how close it is. And this was taken by Dorothea Lange and she's a very famous photographer. So now looking at this image, somebody actually colorized it. It was taken in black and white. And honestly, which one do you guys prefer? Take a look. Which one do you think is more impactful? Honestly, I prefer the black and white version and most people seem to agree. It is just something so powerful uh, and that it doesn't need color and it almost like represents the Great Depression better in that way. Um, it just, it kind of loses some of that, that emotion with the color. And I usually prefer colored images, but th this example, that black and white image is just so much more powerful. So a little background on this image. Uh, it is called The Migrant Mother, taken in 1936. And then if my computer wants to work, maybe, maybe not, just kidding. There we go, okay. And this is of Florence Thompson, and she was living in California in a farm labor tent camp, again taken by uh, a social documentarian, Dorothea Lange. She's very famous. The problem with this image, turns out it was actually posed. And this kind of upset a lot of people. They were like, well, that takes away from the impact. And of course, we've had a discussion on ethics in the previous lectures with Danny. But how do you guys feel about that? Are you upset that this was posed? Do you think it changes anything? Nonetheless, it was still a really powerful image and again, the icon of the Great Depression. So now before we move on to some other photos, uh, again, I spoke about how getting closer and how the closeness of this image just makes it more impactful. And I see this a lot with newer photographers is that they are not getting close enough to their subjects. So we'll kick off this quote by Robert Kappa. If your pictures aren't good enough, you're not close enough. Okay, so we're going to talk about a little bit more about the importance of an image and the role it can play in society, the role of photography in society. And we're going to give you some tips to creating striking images. We'll probably go more into that in the next video. And here's another little quote. I love to include these little quotes. Some of them really stick with me. Uh, is to me, photography is an art of observation. It's about finding something interesting in an ordinary place. I found it has little to do with the things you see and everything to do with the way you see them. So you hear this a lot. Oh, uh, I don't have anything interesting to photograph. Uh, I don't live in an interesting part of the world. Yada, yada, yada. Excuses, excuses. Start seeing your world differently and you can capture great photos anywhere. And if you happen to live in Fort Collins here near CSU, we are very lucky and there are stunning things to take photographs of everywhere. Lots of interesting people in town. And if you don't live here and you consider your town in quotes boring, there are definitely some cool things to take photos of. Okay, wow, my computer's just having a great time. Uh, there we go. Okay, so that image of my grandmother was so iconic that it is still used and recreated in modern culture. So this was sketched to symbolize the Katrina victims. 
over here. Um, and on that note of Katrina, this image was published in the Dallas Morning News. It's a photo of Tracy Nolan. And this image hits me in the feels. It is... It's nothing crazy. It's nothing special. It is just an extreme close-up of a woman's face. And you can feel her pain just by looking at her. You can see the tears. There's really a really shallow focus here. So there's not a lot in focus. Um, and start looking at this photo. Look at the details here. You don't know anything about this woman. Just that, you know, she's a victim of Katrina. But just from this photograph, you can tell, hey, there's a ring on her finger. Maybe she lost somebody. She's clearly in a lot of pain and this really represents the devastation of Katrina. And she actually lost her son. And that is why this image was captured. So images just have a powerful way of capturing and evoking emotion in people. It's hard to look at this photo and not feel something. Okay, so let's talk about the role of photographers and society. So you get social documentarians like Dorothea Lange and you're recording for history purposes and some staging is allowed. However, it can kind of create some ethical dilemmas. Whereas photojournalists are focusing on news and reporting events, 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 and no staging is allowed whatsoever in news. Don't stage your photos if you are a journalist. So many people have gotten fired for this. Remember ethics. Okay, a portraitist. Obviously that is taking pictures of people's faces. Um, I mean, a lot of photographers, this becomes their bread and butter and this is how they make most of their money is taking pictures of people. A landscape artist. People love landscape photography. It's a lot harder to actually make money with landscape photography. Some famous photographers here, William Jackson, Ansel Adams, the F64 group, uh, and I'll provide some links below this video as well so you can see some more of their work that I don't show in this lecture. And then you get artists who create and manipulate images. We're seeing a lot of these on Instagram where they're taking amazing photos and then maybe they're combining them, adding special effects, playing in Photoshop, and creating art out of the image. A lot of editing. So, uh, and we're gonna talk about that as well. And you guys are actually gonna practice this in your big assignment. Okay. Um, there we go. Okay, so now, speaking of landscape photography, this is by William Jackson, taken in 1871. One of the first photographs of the Yellowstone area. Uh, this is the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. I've actually been here and it blew my mind. It is incredible. And this was so important because this was back when traveling wasn't easy and people wouldn't have been able to see this. And this is part of the reason that we have national parks today, because this was shown to Congress to show like how pretty the country is and how it needs to be preserved. And without photography, we may not have natural parks, na as many natural parks as we have, or they may have only formed later. So it's a very important part of history. You can't really talk about landscape photography without talking about Ansel Adams. This is a very famous photo that has been recreated many times. It's also been here and it is just stunning. Um, this is a Snake River image. I actually like have some friends who just randomly have this on their wall. Very famous um, for recording and taking pictures of landscape. So Ansel Adams. And uh, that is going to wrap up our little short lecture on the role of photographers in society and the meanings behind images. So things to take away from here is that images have a lot of power. They can help create history. They can help document it. Uh, and they're a way for people to connect. Uh, also, there will be some links below on other photos. I haven't shown examples of everything here. You guys have all seen news photos, know what a portrait is, uh, and we'll address some art images a little 
later. So go ahead, check out those links, look at those photos, and I look forward to reading your discussions on what photos you guys like to look at and what inspires you.